Well, good afternoon. This is Pastor Chad. Just want to give you a short preview and uh, maybe an encouragement to attend our Wednesday night class tonight. Uh, we've been walking through the book, The Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, one of the great Puritans. And uh, tonight we come to the journey of Christian as he has left the house of Mr. Interpreter and he arrives at uh, a hill and on this hill there is a cross and this becomes significant for Christian as he is uh, along the journey he is burdened by this great burden on his back so if you can picture like a, a backpack or something like that on his back and and it's it's slowed his journey um, it uh, even caused him to fear for his life in the slew of despond as he was sinking in the mud because of the weight of this burden. At different times he has desired to run in his journey to the celestial city but couldn't because of this burden that hindered him. But now tonight we find that as he comes to this hill and on this hill is a cross that all of a sudden his burden falls off, rolls down a hill, falls into a tomb, and uh, Christian is rid of his burden forevermore. And so we're going to be talking about this evening the significance of that. Um, the Pilgrim's Progress is an allegory, so there's a lot of symbolism, a lot of metaphor, a lot of simile, a lot of those uh, you know things, uh, imagery, and those sorts of things that you learned about in high school um, that we're trying to revive and trying to bring into fresh realization as far as its application towards spiritual truth. And so one of those is, is this burden that Christian has been carried and what is its significance. So we'll be addressing that this evening. Um, <clears throat> then in the, along the journey after he leaves this, uh, leaves the hill of the cross, he continues his journey and he uh, runs into two more of our main characters, uh, one by the name of Formalist, and the other by the name of hypocrisy. And they kind of stumble onto the path that Christian is on. And, uh, and Christian takes up a discussion with them, and he says, well, how in the world is it that you have come uh, onto this path um, by other means than through the wicket gate? Right? So Christian, on his journey, was instructed by evangelists to enter through the wicket gate. And from there, the path would take him to the city of God, the celestial city. But here's formalist and hypocrisy, and they stumble over the wall onto the path, and they take up the journey. And, and Christian wants to know, well, this is, you didn't come by the right way. There's only one way onto this path. And uh, so he takes up an argument with them, and there's argument, counter-argument. And uh, this is all significant because uh, Jesus says that you know only those who come through uh, the door and the gate of the shepherd are you know those who are on the right path. And uh, those who come up by other means, by other ways, they're thieves and robbers. And so we'll be talking about that this evening as well. Then next we find that Christian comes to another hill. And uh, as he approaches this hill, and formalist and hypocrisy are still with him, the path that he is on goes straight up the middle of this hill. And it's called difficulty. This hill is called difficulty because the path going up it is very steep. Uh, it's very treacherous, uh, very difficult. But at the same time, there are two diverging paths from that main path, uh, one being called danger and the other called destruction. And uh, formalist and hypocrisy, looking at the, at the straight and narrow way up the hill, the, the way of difficulty, say, you know what, I'm not going that way. I'm going to find a shortcut. I'm going to find an easier way. And so they, each of them uh, separately take uh, the path danger and the path of destruction. And as the names imply, they end up uh, in destruction. But only Christian decides to go up the hill difficulty by the straight and narrow way. And though it's a difficult climb, he makes it. He makes it to the top. But when he gets to the top, he realizes... I've lost my roll. I've lost my scroll, uh, the parchment that had been given to me by the angels when he lost his burden and uh, realizes I need to go back and try to find it. And so he thinks in his head, you know, where could have I have dropped it? Where could have I have lost it? And he remembers 
that when he was about halfway up the hill difficulty, he found a place to rest. And so he took a time of rest, but not only did he rest, but he fell asleep and he lost a lot of time. In fact, Christian himself laments that he wasted and squandered a lot of time because he became lazy and slothful and and, and ended up sleeping way too long than he should have. So uh, at that point, he realizes, you know what, that was the last point that I had my role, so I need to go back there. Uh, he retraces his steps back down the hill difficulty, that difficult, difficult path. He goes back down, finds the role, and has to climb back up the hill again. And so uh, he is kicking himself, uh, chastising himself. He is just, he realizes he has lost a lot of time. He has wasted a lot of daylight. So now he's walking through the night. But in the distance appears a palace. And this palace is described as beautiful. And uh, that will take us into next week's lesson. But um, that's in a nutshell kind of what we're going to be covering this evening. And so a lot of great spiritual truth, right? As we mentioned, Pilgrim's Progress is allegory. So it's it's uh, taking everyday common occurrences, events, people, things, and translating them into spiritual truth um, as far as what Scripture would would say. And so this evening, we're going to be uh, following along those lines. It's a great study. It's been very encouraging. All those who have been coming have been greatly encouraged. And uh, so if you're available this evening, even if you haven't been to any of our classes so far, you are more than welcome to jump right in, and I think you'll be just fine. We'll give a short pre or, uh, a short summary of where we've been, and uh, then we'll jump into tonight's lesson, and, and you should be just fine, even if you haven't read the book before, and even if you haven't attended any of our other classes. So 6.45 tonight, we'd love to see you at Gospel Open Bible Church, and uh, you won't be disappointed. God bless you. Have a great afternoon.